So um, this weekend uh, I was at um, the University of Syracuse for Postmodernism, Culture, and Religion 4, which is the uh, what's now the the version of the Villanova uh, John Caputo Continental Philosophy slash uh, religion conferences, and uh, um, it was fascinating for a number of levels. Sometimes when I go to uh, theology meetings, uh, I think, man, these folks are uh, disconnected from the world. And then I go to philosophy meetings and I go, oh, no, 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 these people are disconnected from the world. Um, and I say that lovingly because I think that the work they do is... Um, if not vital in the sense of life-giving, certainly incisive in terms of it being insightful. Um, there's something about training the mind and, and thinking that has its own contemplative value. And uh, until he decided that his retirement, which had been real for years, was a real, real retirement, uh, I was hoping to eventually study with uh, Caputo. But alas, that's not the case. Um, Anywho, in his farewell lecture, this is his last lecture of his last conference because he's retiring, apparently, for really real, real, um, he was incredibly fixated on um, notions of finitude, uh, that is to say, kind of mortality, particularly as they pertain to kind of cyborg theology or cyborg philosophy, um, particularly as rotated by uh, kind of the flavors of Ray Kurzweil, the folks who are trying to, via um, technological uh, advancement, reach a place where humanity uh, is no longer bound to the flesh, which is to say humanity um, in the individual life and humanity come culturally becomes infinite. There's no reason to consider or concern oneself with death because the, the body is no longer where consciousness resides. Um, the thinking mind just kind of occupies um, some technological capacity. Well, um, something ticked off in the way back of my head and I remembered an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Oh, by the way, did I mention that 99% of the folks at the uh, PCR conference were white and almost all of them were men. Anyway, so I was thinking about Star Trek The Next Generation and um, it was the sixth episode, uh, sixth season, episode 12, I had to look that up, Ship in a Bottle, uh, the evil villain of Sherlock Holmes, Moriarty, uh, somehow develops his own consciousness on the holodeck takes over the holodeck computer, tricks the captain to thinking he's actually on the ship by making the holodeck um, uh, look like it's the ship, gets the like access codes to the ship, and uh, tries to convince the captain that he needs to be a real live being out in the world um, and in a turning around of events, the captain and Data outsmart this evil computer program holodeck villain, convince him that he's actually left the holodeck by projecting him into his own internal holodeck, and uh, he lives the rest of his evil computer life uh, on someone's desk in a little cube. Um, it's not a very new thought, it's the kind of the old Descartes, what if demons control your mind and they make you see and think things. Uh, you know, it's epistemological question. How do you know what you're uh, experiencing is is real? Um, but the worry, right, uh, that Caputo has is that, you know, with humanity ever advancing, um, there's a possibility that the flesh won't be relevant. And we could, in fact, be just living or creating lives or consciousnessness that could live in computer chips on a desk. Well, this got me to thinking. And... Um, it's nothing particularly insightful, but but I really do feel as if finitude is is simply par for the course with humanity, and this thinking is probably utterly undeveloped, and so it's not going to do anyone a whole lot of good. But my thought on that is, you know, even if he was just some kind of guy living in a computer chip on a, someone's desk, or you can go into the Matrix, you know, um, 
finitude, that is to say, the fact that the human mind is not infinite, uh, is always going to be present. Uh, or that's to say, if somehow finitude ceases to be present, we're not really functioning as humans anymore. And certainly as a Christian, I think that part of, part of the, the narrative of life and death in Jesus is also inherent in our human lives. That we know we're dying, we are mortal, but we also know that we were born, we are natal, we came into being and we will cease being, and our, our task is to live between the natal and the mortal uh, in such a way that we are demonstrating our, our Christianness. And it seems to me that to focus either prior to the birth or after the death um, is actually kind of chasing uh, chasing the end of the rainbow. You know what what we have, whether they're promises or uh, speculation regarding after death or before birth, um, is in fact not what humanity is about. Humanity is about finitude. It's about the passing of times and days and hours and minutes and seconds and the, the frailty of life. Because it's, it's in that frailty, right, that we get to have experience, that we get to have time, um, that change is even possible. And if anything, the hope for resurrection necessitates change. So I'm not interested in immortality. And I, for one, think that the horror of death is somewhat beautiful because it's because of time passing and change that that new life even is possible at all. And so Caputo can be worried about it and maybe technology will move to the point where finitude is a moot category and humanity can uh, be infinite and uh, omnipresent. But uh, my two senses is that if that happens, the notion of humanity will have been so stretched that it might as well have broken.